different order. That way it's a little more convenient to work on our planners. That is, of course, unless I turn into an icicle before that's all said and done. I had to abandon the 9620R out here in the open for a few minutes and come back to it because when it's below freezing outside, the park brake acts up for some reason. I get an error code for a solenoid fault. I imagine what's happening is that the hydraulic oil is not warm enough. I don't know if it's not releasing the brake fully or at all. I get this park brake pressure very high code. And I also get park supply solenoid circuit fault. I did let the tractor warm up for about 10 minutes before I moved it. I was a couple bars onto the engine temperature, but that does not mean that the hydraulic oil really heated up. Shouldn't be an issue now because I revved it up and let it sit for five more minutes. Follow the leader. I don't plan on using this 9620R to pull anything out of the barn just because it's such a large frame tractor. Dimension wise, it won't give us as much room to back into that corner and grab our vertical till or two field cultivators. I did fire up one of the 9460Rs, which should be a little bit more maneuverable, which is strange to say that because it's still a really big tractor, but it's a tad bit smaller than one of these things. getting a sit rep of our placement job to see how exactly I need to extract it. Looks like I'm gonna have to drag it out about four foot, then I can lift it up. If I do anything too prematurely, I'm just gonna grab a hold of the field cultivator tongue. At least it's got a diagram to tell us which one's which. Assuming it's right. Hey, I can use it. Neighbors may want to borrow it. Well, we are going to use it, but we're not using it today. That's the point, because the tractor will come back to the barn. We left this pristine bolt on the tongue when we unhooked it, probably indicating that it goes on here somewhere. Where it goes, though, is a great question. Maybe the boss knows. Normal culprit bolt that holds on the rolling basket. Seem to go through a few of these a, a week when you're running this. High speed and tillage just don't really seem to mix in terms of longevity of bolts and other hardware. I'm waiting on some reinforcements to pull this out because I feel like an additional set of eyes or two would be helpful so we don't hit any of the things on either side. Obviously we don't hit the planter tractor, don't want to mess up the tongue of the field cultivator, and arguably equally as important as all three if not more is the side of the barn, which it's a tight fit, it's going to be a tight corner, very likely to hit it if you're not paying attention, so we're going to wait.
in this position, the vertical till should be the hardest one to get out. The rest of these are gonna be easy. We'll pull a planter out, then we can swing both the field cultivators a little bit wide. Jeff and Chris are sneaking out a quick load of corn from the grain bin. So Dad and I are gonna hook up some Starfire stuff. Get her mounted up up here and we'll be ready to go. <laughs> Test run. Display detected. You know you've been successful when all the annoying beeping has moved away from this screen and is now on this screen. Better get used to all this. Okay, okay, I got it. So like technology-wise, we are ready to plant. Although it doesn't really appear this way, I'm actually carrying a substantial amount of monetary value in GPS auto steering hardware. Given all the supply shortages, these things are worth their weight in gold, if not more because you really just can't come by them, so you can't get one. The rest are worth quite a bit more, I guess is the way it works. Supply and demand, science, something. Arguably too much stuff to be trying to carry under one armpit. Time for a tire check. Hey, the unfold cylinders work. That's a good start to the season. Want to make sure all these wing wheels are aired up. I'm not optimistic, but I have been surprised many times in the past. With the exception of one tire on the inside main frame, everything's in pretty good shape. That is the one nice thing about us working later into the summer, putting new sweeps on this new hardware, greasing everything, because when it's 30 degrees in March when we pull them out of the shed, we don't have to work on much. in for a quick drink. Might as well top them off while we're working on. Needless to say, we're kind of all over the place today. We're gonna fix this bolt on the vertical tillage rolling basket. I'm gonna loosen all four of them. I probably don't have to loosen any more than this.
other than greasing the vertical till it's all squared away we fix that bracket that holds on the rolling basket it doesn't quite get the same attention that the field cultivators do because they only get used in one season that vertical tillage will see work both spring and fall and unfortunately this year we may use it more than we have in years past because we have some corn stalks that we didn't get worked and a few new fields that have corn stalks that are going to need worked that our field cultivators will not be able to pass through. hydraulics. If I'm being completely honest, we've actually traded for a brand new field cultivator to pull behind this big 620 horsepower four-wheel drive. We're very afraid that this 15-year-old field cultivator, 44 foot wide, may not be able to hold its structure being pulled with this large amount of horsepower. We've already welded in a few places, pulling with a 460 horse tractor. Unfortunately, uh, due to manufacturing issues, our fuel cultivator that was supposed to be here in March, turned into April, and then it was May, and now it's June, kind of like our combine last fall. So we're not gonna have a new fuel cultivator this year. I'm a little disappointed because it was bigger, had all the bells and whistles, true set, all controllable from the cab, but this should do just fine as long as it doesn't fall apart. Dad and I joked that maybe we'll just have to strap the welder to the back of the tractor, that way we can keep it running. Much better. Now, this thing's got some oomph to it. It's unfolding this fast. Did we put new sweeps on that? There's a few on there, no paint off of them. You think it'd go over there? Like back behind? Beside that other one? Like right next to it in front of the pile? Yeah. Yeah? Fold I didn't up. know if you didn't want to block that. We may need to limit these hydraulics a little bit. Move them a little fast. We decided to move it a little bit to the south for storage. Pump, pump it up, back it up. Slime pile is very inconvenient. Regardless as to whether or not the 9620R pulls one of our old field cultivators in two, I am still excited to see it pull a field cultivator. Should be able to keep our corn planter running, if not our corn and our bean planter running, because we are going to have to cover a little bit of our ground going into soybeans because we didn't really get the fall tillage done that we wanted to. Time for the real fun, greasing all the gazillion grease circs on this land all vertical till. Makes me thankful that we greased the field cultivator last summer. Almost three tubes of grease later, and this thing's got enough lube to run for five hours, maybe. It's the only downside of this vertical till. It goes through a lot of grease in a very short amount of time. It's called for about, I think, 10 hour greasings on it. And you gotta crawl under it, not too fun. Although greasing every day or every other day does sound a little bit more pleasant than crawling under there, dropping one of those disc gangs and putting a new bearing on it. So Dad and I took a short intermission to head over here to that big tile project. The Dean Drainage crew is out here working today. I guess it's dry enough. And they're gonna try and hook in two of those other tiles into this new 24 inch main. And it does look like they did a little work over here on the inlet. They've got the inlet flush against the ground now, so it should have no problems feeding right into there. And they started heading north to hook in to some old clays right there. It's not exactly dry. I guess it's better than not getting anything done. 
somewhere in this moat there's an old clay that they're trying to hook into doesn't exactly have grade to hit the new tile but we don't really want to sit here and flood this little area out so we're going to try and get it there and the plugs eventually it plugs but it'll run for now their boot for this 12 inch is a tad bit smaller than the boot they were running for that 24 inch dual wall it's a much less intensive dig but still important in pretty good shape. Yes, it is. You can see the water is already starting to make its way out from where they cut that tile. That's going to help buy them time in that trench because those two old clay tiles are moving quite a bit of water still, surprisingly. I don't exactly envy these guys today out in the open countryside because it is frigid with this breeze. Okay, that's enough watching other people work. I should probably do something productive here. Shuffle everything back into the barn. Jeez, can't do anything here without getting run over by the man in red. Hey, there goes another planter. Planting season. Yeehaw. cultivators will stay out indefinitely but we're going to leave the land all vertical till hooked on and all the big four-wheel drive tractors and planters will be put back in try to keep our planters as comfortable as possible because we need them to perform when the time to go comes a little more snug than i'd like Pretty snug. I'd say that those old clays were worth hooking in because there's a substantial amount of water in the bottom of that tile even right now. Dad just measured it about five inches from the inside. So definitely going to make a difference in drainage. We don't know whether or not they were draining before, but they are now. After about a week of intermittent work, the Dean Drainage Crew is done here. They've done some great tile work for us, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more of them in the future. Jeff have been chipping away in this 48 foot grain bin, sweeping it out over the last couple days. Weird timing, but I tore my BS ligament right when they started. I think it finally healed up. We get in here and help them.
another tight fit. You can never build a barn big enough. It seems like you build it for whatever dimensions you think are adequate and then you should multiply it by about 25%. And that should last you for about five years till you're unsatisfied with the size. Pulling the field cultivators out though does really open up a lot of space. A lot more room for activities. This weather's really not enticing me a whole lot. I feel like 30 degrees just is a little bit more miserable after it's been 70 degrees for a week. Oh well. At least there's a silver lining. I get to enjoy the warm embrace of a nice enclosed dusty grain bin for like a half a semi load. And I'm also not sure that that's gonna be a fun thing. Before we get too far along though, I need to back both the planters out because they have some kind of a software update that a mechanic or John Deere tech needs to come install and that cannot be done inside the barn because the barn protects us from the government and the government provides us cellular service. So I back these out. The barn always seems to amplify how much it seems to be raining outside. Sounds like it's coming down pretty decently but in all reality it's just spitting a little bit. I'd rather be inside to say the least. Here's my question of the day that I've been pondering here as we prepare for planting season. What tools are essential in every tractor or piece of equipment? I can think of some adjustable crescent wrenches, a hammer, duct tape maybe, a pair of ice grips. It's hard to bring the whole toolbox, but if you can bring things that are very adaptable, you can go a long way. But we run John Deere equipment, so it never breaks down. Never at all. About to run Chris over. Looks like a good spot. Now with the field cultivators. I guess I should put the three point up. Much better. Have I mentioned how miserable it is outside today? Truly, really, it's the first time I'm bringing it up. In the comments of the video where we pulled this exact merch planter out of long-term winter storage, someone asked if we even washed it last spring or early summer because it was dirty. We did power wash this entire thing down. However, we try not to get too close to the row units, both motors that control the seed plate and the delivery brush because we're kind of afraid of breaking that weatherproof seal on one of those row computers and messing that up. So we don't take any chances. It's just plastic there anyways. It doesn't look the freshest, so to speak, but performs fine, trying to avoid messing up anything unnecessarily. I would really hate for vanity to cost us money at the end of the day, but we do drive John Deere equipment, so saving money is kind of already out of the question. I've never been in so much of a hurry to get inside of a grain bin as I am today. Perfect. All of our power here at the main farm is three phase so we can switch around a couple of the hot wires reverse the direction of the fans and as opposed to blowing it out we can suck it through get a lot of that dust out and make it a little easier for us we usually turn them on and run because they're kind of loud One of my favorite crappy weather pastimes is driving around the John Deere lot and seeing what they have. 
and check out this DB60 36 row 20 inch spacing planter they have. Whew. Now that's not ours, but it definitely has the wheels turning in my mind because that would be an awesome machine to run. Only four more rows than our 32 row 15 inch spacing planter that's 40 foot wide. This is 60 foot wide. That five inches makes about a 12 row difference. So if you wanted to have 15 inches on a 60 foot planter, it'd be a 47 or a 48 row. And we have quoted them. That adds about $80,000 to the price tag. But man, are they sharp. Those aren't the exact merge units. Those are max emerge. So not the highest tier, but still quality. No delivery brushes. And of course it's on that Bauer built bar. If anyone's looking for a birthday present for me in May, here's here it is right here. I'm actually a huge fan of John Deere's restyling on these planters. I like the new seed tanks. I believe they have a larger capacity too, which would be pretty important when you're planting 60 foot of soybeans at a time. Sign me up for one. The John Deere tech has shown up and left and upgraded all of the fancy schmancy software on our planter. So I'm gonna put this one away and probably be done for the day. appears to me that we've switched spots in the barn. Usually I'm on the north side with my planter, but I guess the exact emerge is on the north now. Tough compromise. I had lofty ambitions for today for all the things I was going to get done. We're going to get some extreme productivity, and unfortunately that did not happen. The weather really sidetracked any of my ambitions. That being said, I do have a lot on the plate to get done before planting season. With the forecast looking the way it is though, that's not gonna be any time in the next week or two. Things can change quickly, but I'm not gonna bet that it's gonna be dry. I think that's more than enough farming for one video. I appreciate you all tuning in. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day everyone, peace.